Good evening and welcome you all to Idealize, powered by Idea Mart, organized by the Isaacin University of Mordua. Before we start, let me ask you a simple question. What makes us special? What makes us humans, or rather, Homo sapiens sapiens special? If you can remember your history lessons, you know that we had some other human species like Homo erectus, Homo neanderthals, Homo fallacious, but us, only us, Homo sapiens, were able to survive to the modern times. What did bring us here? What brought us here? If you go along the line of history through the millenniums, you might see that whenever and each time when a human think out of the box or thought out of the frame or think in a different way than the conventional way or the usual way, human evolution accelerated. 100 years ago, we were powered by steam engines. 20 years ago, 10 years ago, we were powered by solely computers. But now the world is changing. The human civilization is driven by the centralized power on your palm of your hand. Now, if you go out there, you might find for almost all this stuff that we are having in day to day life, there are mobile applications. So mobile application driven technology has become an, an energetic new arrival in the human civilization. So you can see that new ideas or ideologies, new ways of thinking has changed the human revolutions. So that's why Isaac, as a youth run leading organization in Sri Lanka and of course in the world, we were thinking of providing a solid platform for young innovative minds all across the country, giving them a platform where they can come up with newly self-driven solutions to the problems that we are having out there in the society and in the community. So that's why we came up with this idea and program. Rather than having a typical idea and program, we wanted to have a, a something novel, something new, something extraordinary. So by partnering with Idea Mart, we gave life to idealize 2021. It's a place where you, young individuals like yourself, who are waiting to change the course of the world, who are changing to, who are waiting to change the course of the human race, have a chance to come up with solutions to the existing problems. So with that thought, we would like to welcome you all to the third mentoring session conducted by the Idealize 2021, powered by Idea Mart and organized by Isaac in University of Marto. Welcome you all. All right, once again, welcome back to the third mentoring session of the Idealize 2021, powered by Ideamart, organized by Isaac in University of Mordua. So as I mentioned before, today the primary focus is on the mobile applications and the development of mobile application. As I mentioned before, today for almost all the problems, now the developers are trying to make a, a mobile application. You may find even for higher medical, advanced medical procedures, now there are mobile application. So that's why we were thinking of putting IDATHAN, this IDATHAN program, primarily focused on mobile applications. So speaking of today's theme, uh, 
topic. Today, we will be focusing on the topic of implementing a data-driven GTM strategy for mobile applications. So during the competitions, we are expecting you participants to have a rough or clear idea about, about this particular theme. That's why we have invited very prestigious speakers and, of course, the, the field expertise in this regard to have a kind of insightful conversation with you guys through this virtual platform that we're having right now uh, in through the YouTube Live as well. So without further ado, uh, before, we, before we welcome our speakers, I would like to send a big shout out to our sponsors who are making this dream come true with Isaac University of Morocco. Ladies and gentlemen, the sponsors and partners who are with us in Idealize 2021. Starting off with Dialog, Asia PLC, Sri Lanka's premier connectivity provider. IdeaMart, a global award-winning platform for developers and content providers, presented by Dialog Asia PLC, is a startup ecosystem enabler of Dialog Asia PLC, making available telco APIs, thereby allowing any third-party technopreneur or entrepreneur with an idea to join, use unutilized telco assets, create their own mobility services, and monetize them with zero risk with no upfront fee. IdeaMart's ecosystem is 15,000 plus strong, which consists of both tech and non-tech service providers, offering 20,000 plus services to consumers in six mobile operators across multiple geographies, while having the potential to reach 25 million subscribers. Their mission of fostering innovation and technology entrepreneurship through the IdeaMart platform and its 15,000 plus strong local developer community. Moving on to our official banking partner, Hatton National Bank. Hatton National Bank is the premier private sector commercial bank operating in Sri Lanka with 251 branches spread across the island. The bank has been internationally recognized by the Asian Banker magazine as the best retail bank in Sri Lanka on 10 occasions from 27 to 2017. The Banker magazine of the UK named HMB or Hatton National Bank as the bank of Bank of the Year in 2012, 2013, and 2017. HMB is also placed among the bankers' top 1,000 banks in the world. HMB is actively involved in retail banking, corporate banking, international banking, treasury, and project financing. Big shout out to our banking partner, Hatton National Bank. All right, once again, a big shout out to our titles partner, Idea Mart, Dialogacia, the PLC, and of course, our banking partner, Hatton National Bank. With your pride support, we are able to do this platform. We are able to bring this platform to Sri Lankan youth right now all across the island. So without further ado, let us move on to today's session. As I mentioned you before, the third mentoring session or the today's session will be focusing on the implementing a data-driven GTM strategy for mobile applications. So for this session, we have invited very prestigious guests from a, a rather expertise in the field in right now in Sri Lanka. So without further ado, let me give you the official formal profile introduction of the three speakers who will be facing 
you today with their expertise. Let's start with Mr. Steve F. Efromas, Managing Director, Simato Vas Solution Private Limited. With over two decades of industry experience as an innovator and entrepreneur, he is skilled creator of products and services in the value added services segment. During last decade, he has successfully launched multiple entrepreneurial businesses, capitalizing on his strong desire to rethink company models, utilizing new digital technology. These businesses were founded and are still growing to provide specialized services, including value-added services, software development, and digital advertising. He's currently working on a new financial technology startup and commercialization with like-minded industry partners. Mr. Steve F. Fromis is a remarkable business owner who has an entrepreneurial spirit and treats his company as if it's own. He has a natural ability to multitask under pressure and in a fast paced atmosphere. He's just one of the few talents who can combine inventiveness in proposal creation, implementation, and evaluation correctness. This is why Mr. Steve is self motivated and exudes a positive energy that encourages all other stakeholders to complete the stars. Ladies and gentlemen, the Managing Director of Simato Vas Solution Private Limited, Mr. Steve Fromis. Second speaker for the today's session, three years experience in dialogue, RCIT PLC and R&D engineer, specialist tech evangelist, works as product evangelist at AppMaker powered by IdeaMart, associates analyst programmer, associates software developer at Iphonic Private Limited, freelance web researcher, Technological evangelist with a track record of generating business impact and driven techn technical innovation in the telecom sector. Personal and business management expertise currently in the focus with the focus of providing technological solutions to IDMAR based products, working as a product evangelist at, of App Maker, building new products and tools to empower the developer community across Asia. Growth of long tail technology business in across Asian region of IDMR Telco API platform. Ladies and gentlemen, the second speaker for today, Mr. Sharnika Vikramaratvichi. Moving on, the third speaker for today's session, Mr. Pasidu Bandara Naikal. Tech evangelist with expertise driven commercially impact and pushing the boundaries of technological innovation in the telecommunication sector. Currently, the work is focused on working as tech evangelist in the award winning app maker platform providing technology-related solutions to IdeaMart-related products and competing events and engagement focused on IdeaMart developer community. Ladies and gentlemen, third speaker for today's session, Mr. Pasidu Bandara Naika. All right, without further ado, from here onwards, I would like to invite our panel, of, uh, panel to carry on the session from here onwards. Over to you, sirs. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, guys. For like, it's a, it was a lively interaction. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure how uh, you found the intro. Uh, probably from LinkedIn. Uh, I would say <laughs> it was lively. So, uh, so I have uh, Pasindu and Steve here. Uh, I hope uh, they are a participant from the idealized competition and uh, probably from Sri Lanka and out of uh, the country as well. Uh, so uh, welcome you all to this, uh, you know, uh, this session mainly focus on uh, data driven GTM strategy for mobile apps, uh, as well as any product that uh, uh, that will prevail uh, in, 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 in the market. So uh, we'll start the session now, uh, mainly uh, we'll talk about the GTM process. And after that, we'll be showing you how, how to place, how to actually practice this by, you know, having uh, Facebook advertisements, Google advertisements, and you know, about we'll talk about ad networks. Um, uh, like to start off, we have a bit of a theory, uh, uh, theoretical part. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Yes, uh, so this is a product development process, guys. I hope everyone knows. To start off with, uh, to create any product, we'll have to come up with an idea, right? So let's say, Pasindu, uh, if uh, like let's let, let let's take a product that you want to create. If you, let's say uh, you want to create a health application, right? 
uh, you need to have a compelling idea to make that product uh, and you have to do a research before starting it that's that's one of one of the key issues that uh, our competitors on this competition or anyone uh, does this uh, doesn't do this correctly what they do is they see they get idea and they don't they don't do any research any kind of market research that they straight straight away go to uh, initiating it. it it is one of the key issues that they do conducting market research is very important i hope uh, the participants from this competition uh, have done their research properly and you know come up with the idea and you know start creating their applications third phase is uh, design build uh, test the products i hope that you are in this session in, the, in this uh, phase right now we are talking about the fourth session right now that will be like uh, that mainly will be talking about uh, how we can uh, uh, promote and launch your product uh, uh, to the market that can be sri lankan audience or outside sri lanka uh, so let's continue the presentation first thing uh, what is a brand steve pasindu what is a brand any any your, i i, I need would... to see answers yes yes i need to see answers <laughs> uh okay your, a your brand, identity right. basically for your for your right, product right so like let's let's say let's say that i i think that's that's a hard question <laughs> asking a definition okay let's say uh, uh so let's let's define a brand as a name term or a design uh, uh, that can be identified and you know that can be distinct from any other brand right let's say uh, coca cola coca cola brand is identical to you know any anywhere in the world that is identical that can be distinctly identified uh, from a different brand let's say we have my cola we have any any other drinks so this brand can be you know identified in different way so this logo the colors that everything defines uh, the design the symbols everything defines this brand so first thing i want to tell you is before going to this product development or gtm strategy in your product if you don't have a proper branding setup right if it, if it is a, if it is an android application if it is a website you have to have a proper branding setup that can be colors that can be a logo that can be anything so you have to have that so that's the first thing you have to have right so uh, let's continue the presentation next thing uh, consumer behavior very important uh, consumer behavior is a topic that uh, a process that we see a study that we see how consumers behave consumers adapt to your product now you have a brand created now you're going to see how this consumers going to adapt to this brand right so that can be you know consumers uh, will say sometimes consumers may like it sometimes they may, they may not so uh, so that's an issue you have to see in consumer behavior subject if you look at uh, uh, consumers emotionally mentally in your like behaviorally they attach to a product let's say uh, uh, bmws i think uh, steve is more connected to bmws than anyone right so <laughs> so steve is like emotionally connected to that brand right i think i'm correct right you bought a different one no you could say that <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh, something like that very similar people people like let's say there are certain people like uh, let's say i want i i bmw i8 so they are emotionally connected with this brand so that's the brand strategy that uh, bmw has done they have talked to these consumers to their hearts to their minds that they have done that's their strategy so we know about brand we know about the consumer behavior now right so this is a, like a very important concept stp marketing segmenting targeting and positioning now we have created a product now we have a brand in your hand now let's see how to identify this uh, uh, crowd uh, to cater this product first thing segmenting uh, market segmentation so market segmentation is identifying uh, distinctive common common traits between consumers so you know you know how consumers behave right now now we're going to see how these people how what are the distinctive traits common traits between these people so pasindu if you are here let's tell me like uh, let's let's take uh, let's take uh, what what's your example popular example 
uh, yeah. uh, Alto. Uh, Alto, Alto vehicle. So this is that, that's that's our topic. We are not going to talk about uh, BMWs uh, or anything Mercedes Benz. So we're talking Alto. So oh, anyone can you know. Yeah, this is a pointing presentation. So yes, but again, uh, we're going to see how this uh, you know Alto can cater uh, this market in Sri Lanka. How they have dominated Sri Lankan market and maybe India as well. So Pasidu, what are the demographics that uh, you can see? Uh, you can cater if you look at Alto. What are the demographics? They have they have taken age. What are what are the age age uh, the differences? Do we have a preference age? For uh, buying an alto, what are what are consumers' preferences on uh, buying an alto? Well, I would say Shanaka, the uh, mostly the people who have just started doing jobs. Right, 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 uh, right. The age, age. I would say the age right. would range from twenty Starters, to thirty. No? twenty to yes, yes, yes. And gender based, I would say both genders, like right? male and female. There are no these differences, but probably sometimes could be female, uh, females. Yes, since it's very small. Uh, in size, so ethnicity. I don't see any differences. Geography, city. I, I I'm not sure about other countries, but uh, uh, Alto brand has you know dominated Sri Lankan market and India as well because of uh, of of the of of uh, of the price price range that they provide. So they have uh, you know if you look at geographically, they have regionally as in a country they have dominated Sri Lanka and India and other parts and other a parts of the APAC region as well. So, if you look at values, I'm not sure how this can achieve. But if you look at behavior uh, segmentation, purchases interest. If you look at purchases, uh, purchasing power is really low. If you look at uh, alto buyers, uh, and uh, interest could be uh, uh, you know just starting, starting to feel like ride a vehicle or something like that. So, guys, uh, we took a small example uh, just to show you how this market segmentation could be done. This could like. Taken directly to your mobile application as well. Just think of an application that you created or a website that you created. You have to see how this market segmentation could be done. Create few buckets. Create few user personas. Uh, Pasundi is one user persona. Steve is one user uh, persona. Pasu prefers Toyota. Steve prefers uh, BMW. So you can have two buckets and put these different different user categories to these. Uh, uh, you can segment it, segment these uh, user categories in different different buckets. So uh, let's take an application. After you create an application, this is the first step of a GTM strategy. You create few user personas, user buckets. You put these buckets in. You see what are their common traits, what are what are the least uh, selected traits from these customers. You see, you analyze. That's the first step of any GTM strategy. Uh, number two, market positioning. So uh, I have taken cars again. So Pasidu, uh, where should we put uh, Alto? So I, we have seen high price and high performance. High price, uh, we see Ferrari, Merc, Audi, uh, Bugatti. We have everything on high price. Where should we see Alto here? Uh, on the price scale, Shanaga, obviously it's on the lower side. Low, lower side. We are just taking Alto as an example. This is not a discrimination. So <laughs> anyone looking out there, we have <laughs> just just an example, right? So low price and low performance. So after Fiat, we can we can have Alto. Same as this example, guys. You can see the customers that you that you are engaged with your application. Let's say example for a, for uh, for a, for a magazine application that you have. Let's say you create an application, a magazine application with AppMaker. You see. Where this uh, checking with your competitors? Let's say you have many magazines, online magazines uh, on internet. Uh, you have newspapers on internet. You should see where should you focus. Uh, where should you put your product? Uh, is it on high price range? Is your product on low price range or low performance? Uh, so you have to see where should you position your product in this scale. Uh, let's say you you position your product in low performance. Uh, high performance, high price. We say like something like that. So uh, you can see uh, if Sri Lankan market is uh, is okay to buy that. Let's say Ferrari. If you look at Ferrari, Sri Lankan market is not not openly okay to buy uh, Ferrari. So it's it's too much high price. So so you have to opt out Sri Lanka if you are trying out if you are a Ferrari seller. So you have to see what are the products that can be Toyota, that can be Ford, something like that. 
so i'm just we are just taking uh, again we are telling that we are take, just taking vehicles as an example so this session is about uh, mobile applications just taking an uh, example so market targeting the third step stp this is the third, third step after selecting after checking uh, what are the uh, what are the segmentation modules that we have uh, after seeing the product positioning the final step is here we see uh, how we can you know uh, uh, add these uh, segmented users into target groups you have to see you have to add these users into buckets few buckets I, I i mentioned earlier also let's say uh, uh, i have a mobile application i see i want to see what are the what are what are the uh, uh, initial marketing steps that i should take uh, it can be uh, uh, let's say i'm targeting uh, I have a magazine application. I'm targeting urban people uh, of uh, females, urban urban female crowd with uh, 20 to 35 years old. So I, I create a bucket, small bucket, and I put this uh, consumers into that bucket. Let's say uh, Pasindu creates another application and uh, he has another bucket. So in there, so uh, his market targeting is suburban areas consumers in suburban areas and he has uh, female and male both participants both, both consumers uh, and he creates his uh, bucket so there are different different buckets where you can see and uh, where you can uh, add these consumers into and uh, now up to that point you have understood your consumer market that can be in sri lanka that can be outside sri lanka so uh, after that we can see how uh, we can cater these customers. Now you know the customers. I'm catering Pasidu, I'm catering Steve, I'm catering a few others in Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka, uh, age around 30 to 35, in Colombo or in Anuradhapura, in Jaffna. I know everything. So this is data. So further in this uh, pr presentation, Steve and Pasidu will explain you how to, how to actually see this data, uh, so how to use this data. So I'm just taking you to, to a theory part uh, this might be really complicated some some complete some sometimes this would be a little bit complicated but yes this is uh, these topics are really important when you when you uh, make a gtm strategy uh, after this after getting to know about your consumers next step is like uh, using growth hacking techniques and starting your marketing process so i think uh, from here pasindu can take the presentation uh, to talk yeah, about sure. yeah. uh, growth again. Yes. Yeah, give me a second until I share my screen. Right. Uh, screen is visible, no? Yes, can see. Yeah. All right. So Shanaka mentioned about how to create user personas and uh, how you should uh, how you should segment your product. So now I'm going to take you through on how to how how to growth hack your business or how to how to use these growth hacking techniques for your products. All right. So first of all, uh, uh, what is growth hacking? If you go into the meaning of growth hacking, it's this data-driven full funnel marketing based on rapid experimentation, right? So what does that mean? Uh, so now let's see the meaning of it. Uh, uh, the Well, uh, in the marketing, there be, there's something called the traditional marketing method. So the, in the traditional marketing method, what, you, what people used to do was a marketing team would come up with some... Uh, some kind of flyer and they'll choose some marketing stream uh, maybe radio it can be radio tv or magazine or newspapers or anything like that and they'll drive traffic to their product so that's how the traditional marketing method went but then it needed a change you know uh, then this growth hacking uh, concept uh, came into the market so the in the growth in growth hacking uh, concept uh, there are basic uh, five or six steps which uh, the marketeers should follow it's, uh, basically starting with ac awareness acquisition uh, activation retention and finally thinking about the revenue so uh, in the growth the growth hacking model comes as a funnel you, as you can see here the top is bigger and 
uh, as soon as I go uh, to the bottom, it's get uh, thinner. So uh, uh, in the top tier is the awareness. Awareness uh, means uh, how the users of your app or service or product find you. Basically, this is uh, this is uh, this awareness thing talks about uh, your marketing methods and uh, spreading the name about your product. Once your product is out there, I mean, the, when the, when the end users know about your product, once your uh, campaign, campaigns campaigns are done, next step is acquiring those users. So that's the uh, second step of this growth hacking. And the third thing is retaining the users who's already acquired to the uh, your to your, your product, and then uh, is referral and revenue. Passing a small, uh, passing a small yeah. interruption. So I, I just yeah. saw a few comments. Uh, I think uh, uh, Praveen is telling that AppMega will reach the international audience soon. Uh, Mafas is telling AppMega only possible within LK. Okay. Right. So I'm not sure these guys know that uh, we launched AppMaker in Bangladesh as well. So if you can see uh, my T-shirt, I'm not sure you can see. So I'm wearing AppMaker Plus, uh, a T-shirt of the brand we launched in for international audience. So we'll be talking about how we launched, oh, like how, how anyone can launch the local product and to cater international audience as well in this session. So uh, stay on. Mafas and Praveen Ravi. So this product is not only in Sri Lanka. Now it has gone out of out of Sri Lanka to cater international ma uh, markets as well. So yes, Pasin, sorry about that. Yeah, no worries. So since we are done, uh, uh, so so let's move to the next topic. So it's awareness, like it comes on top of the uh, growth hacking time funnel. Sorry. Uh, so in awareness, main thing is building the you are building your brand image and letting the end users know about it right this can be facebook advertisements uh which we'll be talking about in at the latter part of this session and it can, it either can be google ads or app store optimization so anything like that can be your awareness campaign uh this is really important because the more you get the more users you get through this awareness campaign mean that you will have more end users at the end of the uh, funnel right the, the more you get more will stay so uh, next step as in the funnel it's acquisition and activation uh, to acquire users uh, well uh, you should actually the, like shanati mentioned like in that alto example uh, we should get the user personas like uh, we talked about how uh, how a alto buying person would look like she would be around 20 to 30 years of age and should have a, some kind of a salary maybe we talked about things like that so here you should uh, this is uh, you should uh, actually think about getting the correct people through your awareness campaigns and acquiring them and the next and most important thing about in this uh, growth hacking funnel is retention are the users of your product or app coming back to you back to it to use it if not if they are a one-time unique user uh, you have not you have not successfully done retaining the users because uh, as you can see in the slide acquiring a brand new custom is five times expensive than retaining an existing one it's actually true that uh, it's actually true that uh, Sharnaka and myself, Steve, we have seen that throughout the campaigns that we have done for our products, it's really hard to retain new. Uh, sorry, it's really hard to acquire new users, and uh, if you have returning users, it's really uh, easy for your product to grow uh, quickly, right? Uh, so then, uh, how to keep them in your app? How to keep them in your product? Uh, First and uh, most important thing, give them a good service, right? Give them what they want. So they are using your product, they are using your app for some reason, right? They have they have something, they have a, uh, let's say a question or they have a problem that they need to solve. So that's the reason why they are using your app, right? 
so you need to give them the re uh, needed solutions for them so that they will be satisfied that's number one and then you can do some uh, you know this, those email campaigns right the you can give them the discounts or gift giveaways things like that so that they will be uh, you know uh, they will be using your product more using your app more frequently right and uh, also uh, uh, maintaining the facebook profile or maintaining the social appearance of your product uh, app is also important when retaining the users uh next thing is referral uh, referral is uh, let's say i'm i'm going to use your app and then i'm going to go and tell shanaka that uh, shanaka i use this app it's really good i can get let's say i'm a, i'm, a, I'm a, i need a fitness app right so one of you guys going to create a fitness app then i'm going to download it and i'm going to use it it's really working so i'm going to tell steve and shanaka i guys i downloaded this app it's really good uh, it, it does what it says and i'm uh, i had so many success about with using it and so like that i'm going to refer them how good this app looks how it how it works so that uh, they so then so then they will download it so then chana will download it then steve will download it and they will try it and they will refer it to someone else so that the circle will go on right so you will uh, uh, like i like the, this slide displays uh, make your customer a brand ambassador of your product so then they will uh, you know they will pitch it to other people and once all those steps are done then you can focus on revenue what traditional what differs traditional marketing and growth hacking is on in traditional marketing you create a you create a, a, a some a digital or some uh, traditional flyer and you market it and then you think about revenue but in growth hacking uh, we can we consider about revenue but it comes last we always think about other factors before considering the revenue that's where the growth hacking differs from traditional marketing and what's next now you have completed the funnel now you have uh, uh, went through all the steps you have gone through all the steps so what's next but uh, the next step is gathering the data uh, like i mentioned in the funnel uh, it grows thin uh, when going down right so when you're doing the product uh, there when you're sorry when you're marketing your app when you see when you when you see the acquisition for your app in each step you should take you should check uh, how many people has i uh, got to the app through awareness sessions let's say uh, through awareness through your face let's say you are doing a facebook advertisement and you got 100 uh, 100 users 100 uh, we see it as your app and 100 people has downloaded it okay so then uh, so the first step is done user uh, awareness step is done act uh, acquisition step is done so the next step is uh, retention right out of those 100 users only 50 or oh, let's say th only 30 people has written to your app 70 has gone away so then you should check why those 70 people didn't use your app on a recurring basis you should see the reasons why they didn't use it and you should uh, find a solution for that so that so that the new users will download them and will retain in them like that in you should check every step to see if there's a bottleneck in your uh, in your growth hacking funnel if there's a bottleneck you should create it so then uh, you will have more uh, you will have more users more referrals more retentions and eventually more revenue so passing the small thing passing yes, uh, before winding up can you go to uh, the initial uh, uh, slide, first slide, and can we just uh, give them with an example, like uh, the steps you mentioned? So All you right. sp spoke about five steps, awareness, acquisition, retention, referral, and revenue. So guys, uh, if you are part of this competition, or if you, are, if you are a person who develops mobile applications, Android applications, so websites, so this is the growth hacking funnel that you should follow that can be uh, anything that can be that can be for a website that can be uh, for 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 any kind of a product this growth hacking a funnel is very important 
Pasan, let's talk about uh, these uh, five steps that uh, you mentioned and uh, how you can uh, cater these five steps uh, uh, to 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 a product. Let's say let's take a mobile yeah, application. Sure. So yeah, let's say I'm I'm creating an app for fitness. Okay, so hmm. guys, yes. uh, I know you all are creating uh, what uh, the mobile application. Uh, so you are creating an uh, fitness app. So for that, in the awareness stage. is what you do uh, when you are uh, uh, promoting your app through facebook let's say you you uh, in that stage you acquire 1000 uh, so, users yes before that i think like uh, from from uh, b- before coming to awareness uh, like they have created the product they they know about their product and they know their cu- like the customers the consumers they know their audience if you look at uh, fitness they know okay uh, kalambu we have uh, 1000 users in colombo 10000 users from candy these are females or males or age group is uh, 20 to 40 and 40 to 50 uh, those are the age groups and uh, after that they, they 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 know everything right before coming to this phase uh, if you are a mobile app developer if you are a marketer anyone you should know about your consumer group right consumer buckets i would say so you know you know their information so then comes the viana session that passing to mention that you can add uh, advertisements that can be paid though that can be free that can be any anything that can be on social media that can be on uh, ad networks that can be on google ads anywhere you show your advertisement you show your product to your consumers to these channels so that's what you have to do yes was the next step yeah uh, uh, shan now you want me to talk about acquisition right Action, yes, yes. Yeah. So the, now, now the uh, your users and now the random people in the market, you know, know about your product, right? So before the awareness session, they before the awareness campaign, they didn't know that there's this fitness app. They have no idea. Now they know. Now the problem is that you now you should uh, make sure that they download your. Now you should okay. make sure that they do the necessary act. Uh, activity uh, act, activity that uh, which will uh, which will end of the day which will give you the revenue right it can be download downloading the app it can be the registering to the service right something like that so now uh, uh, the users let's say the now users have downloaded the app uh, once the users have downloaded the app in the if you are making a mobile application the acquisition step is done Shall we want me to move on yes, with other yeah. soil? Yes. So, uh, if you look at acquisition, the first thing that you have to do is like many uh, developers complain, many service providers complain that they get they are they get uh, they get visits. You know, they get they people see their applications, but you know, no one no one really downloads their application. No one really do do like uh, do active purchase of from the application. Let's say if you take an app make application, no one really subscribe to your application, right? no one really pays you to application that has to be done with your content the service that you provide the uh, the 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 power of your brand so uh, everything depend on the effort that you put into your product as long as you nurture your product as long as you uh, fulfill your consumer needs your understanding uh, the consumer needs and fulfilling it through your mobile application or website they will uh, you know actively participate in your mobile application or website or in other sense uh, you can uh, acquire that customer as a active customer right uh, yes i will go to the next uh, slide next session sorry a retention part yeah so the retention is uh, once the users have downloaded your app or has done the necessary step will they come back to your app for a second time Right. Initially, when they when the when the people see some fa- fancy advertisement, they'll click on that advertisement. They go to the Play Store and they'll download it. And if they see there's no use of this app, they probably they'll delete it. Right? Yes. They will yes that happens. That happens. The uh, mobile or oh, just they will let it be there. They'll never use it once. So the retention step, retention retention step in here is. uh how you can make them come back to your app for a second time 
Pasidul, like, let, let's let's give Steve uh, uh, like let's ask him about yeah. uh, this step. Steve, how can we retain users in application? You know, you have experienced, you know, like thousands and thousands of applications that can be app maker, that can be custom built applications. Uh, what are the mechanisms that we we should use to retain these consumers in applications? Um, Shank, I think uh, when it comes to retention, uh, the most important thing is um, you, you need to provide them a good service uh, that is um, in terms of the content that is offered, it needs to be relevant, it needs to be something that uh, that is current, constantly updated, uh, huh. and, and uh, you know, relevant to that user. Um, so we need to, we need to engage the user regularly. We it could be via uh, push messages, um, competitions, uh, Anything, yes. small, small um, giveaways, whatever. But the bottom line is you, you need to have a, a constant relationship with, uh, with your app user so that, uh, you know, they, they, they constantly come back uh, to your app for more. Yes. So a uh, small example that if you have played uh, any like, recent mobile applications, any uh, cache of fans or something like that. I'm just taking an example. So when you start it, when you start downloading it, you know, start playing it, uh, you when you leave it, you get notifications from the application. Okay, this this item refilled. Now start playing. You, you have a battle to finish. Something like that. Uh, uh, you grab the consumer's attention again to the application and get them back. Every day, morning, uh, you see notifications from this application. Okay, you have this. You have, have a gold coin available. Take this. Or oh, you have this competition going on. Try this out. Something like that. Make them come back to the application. That can be a website. That can be a mobile application. There are methods. There are ways to retain them in your application and make them use your content and make them pay. Yes. Uh, final two steps, referral and revenue. Yes, person. Yeah, Shana. So the referral is, like I mentioned before, uh, how you can make uh, the users to tell about your app among their friends. It can yes, be among their yes. friends, it can be among their colleagues. How they how uh, how they will refer your app to others. What yes. may so then in here you should you should think about the facts. What will make them tell you about others about your product? Mm, right, right, so right. What will be the cue point, let's say? So Shana, what will be your example for that? So it's the same thing. Uh, let's say you uh, uh, let's take a movie. You, you watch the movie and you like refer me, okay, this is an awesome movie, just go download and watch or watch online, something like that. Or if, if it is a game that you play, you may say, okay, this is an awesome game, just try it out, just play. Or like if you don't mind, just pay and play both uh, if, it, if, if it is worth. So uh, final step, again, revenue. Uh, retaining, retention of uh, consumers will give you revenue. Making them to refer your product to other consumers will give you more revenue. So that's how it goes. It's a chain. It's a chain reaction. Uh, you use it. You tell to your uh, friends, family, uh, anyone on social media. So that person will come to your application and download. Google Play will tell you to uh, recommend you to download this application. Or oh, Google search engines will ask consumers to use this website. So that's how it goes. Uh, uh, so. Growth hacking funnel uh, is like that, right? It's a funnel. It's, a, it's like a normal funnel. It goes, it, 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 it uh, uh, like slopes down, right? Uh, if you show this application to 10,000 people, only 1,000 people will download it, right? So acquisition phase only has 1,000 downloads. And, uh, and uh, like, sorry, uh, if you show this application to 10,000 people, only uh, 1,000 will download this application, right? So download doesn't uh, count here. Only from that thousand uh, of users, only hundred will actively pay you for this uh, for this service, right? Only uh, out of thousand, hundred will actually pay you for this service and use that. But uh, after referring, after referring this product, after getting referrals, after retaining users, you will be able to gain more and more revenue with time. This is not a like. Like if you create a product today, you can't earn like hundred thousand tomorrow, right? From using AppMake or using any other me like mechanisms that can be Google Pay, that can be Google Ads. You can't make hundred thousand or like one million bucks within 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 a fortnight, right? 
it's a consi- consistent operation that you have to do let's say 3 months 6 months 1 year it takes time but this is how it works in the end you will get revenue so pasu yeah shan guy that actually wraps up the presentation about growth hacking yes the, the finishing points are something that we have seen uh, in the community that people tend to go for uh, third party marketers for market their apps and stuff like that there's no need for that you can do it you can market your products you can market your apps all by yourself you uh, it's really simple because facebook ads and google ads those are really simple uh, it's not complicated you can market your own app and another thing about this marketing is that you need to do all kind of experiments like you should try when you are trying on facebook advertisement you should try different flyers different uh, maybe you should uh, try facebook uh, a video uh, or a, just a normal flyer uh like that you should do different different experiments you should uh, try marketing it to different demographic defo- demographics like shanak mentioned in the uh, yes. first part of yes. the session yes. should like to should like that you should try everything possible and finally you should uh, come up with the most suitable uh, market way of marketing your app or your product and uh, Yes, Shanak. That's wrap up the presentation about. Yes, uh, right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Before going to before going to Steve, I think we have few questions. Juliano is asking, uh, what are the regions that we are looking at? Uh, we don't have any preference, but uh, Steve, do, can you answer that question? <laughs> uh, I, I didn't. We are open for any. It, we are yeah, open if, for if, any if market. The question was in terms of uh, where we are looking at growing. I yes. think. Uh, I think our our, our first uh, steps would be uh, obviously APAC, APAC, expanding APAC. on the Asiata uh, footprint through yes. uh, Southeast Asia. Um, that that would be the first uh, couple of steps. I think that we would be looking at. Yes. Yes, Juliano. If you are if you are from the any any of these countries, you can hit us. Uh, you can see how we can partner up with your country and take this product forward. If not, still you can use a uh, app maker. using uh, not not using subscriptions but also using um, other monetization methods like google pay or google ads uh, doesn't matter wherever you are any part of of the world you can use our services and monetize them uh, yes steve let's go to uh, your presentation uh, uh, using uh, you know uh, how to how to use this gtm we like we spoke about all the theoretical parts but let's see how how you can use this analytical data analytics part uh, into gtm partnering up with that So, uh, Pasindu, are you sharing uh, the presentation? Yes, uh, give me a sec. Um, right, right, cool. Uh, so, guys, end of this presentation, we'll be talking about. We'll be showing how to. If you are not very familiar with Facebook ads, we'll be Pasindu will be giving a small demonstration about how to create a Facebook advertisement, and uh, we'll Steve will be talking about ad networks. Yes, Steve. um so so you want me to continue with the uh, ad networks at this point no, or do you want no to no no uh, pasu can we go to the, the... the yes begin of this like this yeah right. so if, uh i think if you can go to the next slide i can uh, continue to build on from uh, from what uh, shanak and pasindu uh, has already been talking about um i, I think uh, shanak covered quite uh, in detail that it's important to look at your uh, when you when you're looking at your data points it's very important to look at your demographic information um your target market who your target audience is and uh, you can consider uh, socio economic data um location geos and so on and um, i think when when you come up with a idea that you know you want to launch uh, an application it could be anything from a fitness application to a mobile game or uh, you know anything that you you think would uh, be something that you would like to try out it's very important that you initially start off by setting up a couple of objectives that uh, that you would like to achieve 
and uh, what is the data that you would need to uh, measure whether you are on track to achieve these objectives. Um, you should always make sure that these objectives um, are achievable objectives, um, not something that will be impossible to achieve because then uh, you, you're going to end up inevitably demotivating yourself as well. Like, you know, for example, you know, you can't uh, plan to have a million downloads in, in the first week. That, that's, that's a very uh, ambitious uh, target, I would say. So, so make, your, um, make your objectives achievable in small steps incrementally as you, as you go along. Um, it could be uh, it could be anything like uh, you know uh, reaching a number of uh, app installs. It could be um, if you have already uh, achieved your first step of uh, having X number of installs. Let's say a thousand installs, and let's say you want to drive uh, engagement within the app. Uh, you want to get you want to get um, people using your app more often. Um, it could be to acquire a target number of subscribers within your app, um, or it could be uh, to build your brand and create awareness uh, around your app. So um, I think it, you, you need to look at um, what objectives you are working towards and you know what data sets you would need uh, to monitor uh, whether you're actually on track. To, to get there. Uh, pass to the next slide. Before going to the second pass slide, Steve, uh, one thing that I want to mention, uh, for any participants who, who is like watching right now, uh, you have one month of time to like market your product, taking this product to uh, like doing this GTM, right? So like if realistically, if you see like within a month, uh, you can target, uh, let's say, 1,000 downloads, 2,000 downloads, up to 10,000, right? Within a month, you can't do magic. But if you have a realistic target analyzing the audience within the country or outside, I think you can uh, have a good opportunity within, within this competition. So for anyone else watching, uh, have a three-month target. Every three months or six months, just evaluate, reevaluate uh, your targets and uh, renew those targets. Uh, Steve, back to you. Steve, yes. Yeah. Um, pass to next slide. Um, yeah. So, so in terms of the data that uh, you would uh, you would be gathering, you need to you need to make sure that you organize and and focus on the on the data that is most important uh, for you. Uh, to do this, you can you can use uh, tools that are out there. For example. Uh, Google Analytics is a is a free tool that you can use. This will give you uh, a wealth of information in terms of uh, the people that are using your application, their uh, demographic information, how often they use it, um, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, you can use other tools uh, like Kochava, uh, which is uh, which is again a platform specifically for um, mobile application uh, um, data gathering. So. So Kochava would uh, basically integrate with uh, multiple ad networks, ad points, so could be it uh, Facebook advertising, Google, or any other performance network that you're using. Uh, it would tabulate all, all of your uh, application information, such as uh, how many downloads you had, uh, what are the uh, OS versions that are being used, what are the geos that they are from, um, and um, which ad networks are giving you uh, information, I mean, the, the, the best conversions, uh, what is your cost of um, getting uh, uh, a user on board, your cost of uh, acquiring a customer, um, how much revenue has been generated from the customers that have been uh, onboarded thus far. All this information will be tabulated in a, in a very nice, easy to use, uh, graphical user interface. Now, I've just given you one example, but there are, there are you know, uh, a number of uh, platforms such as this, which you could uh, use uh, to obtain the same information. But it's important uh, that, that you look at this information, you gather it, and you, and you use it to, to improve your product offering. Um, it, in terms of uh, 
data apart from uh, app usage, uh, I think when when we are looking at um, uh, in looking at uh, advertising and how to create your target market, uh, information uh, can be collected from various other sources as well. Uh, for example, if you're looking at a, at a financial application, uh, you could uh, also look at publicly available information, such as the payment bulletin, which is uh, done by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. This will give you uh, a lot of information in terms of uh, uh, how many online transactions are being done, how many credit cards are there in the country, um, you know, the value of transactions. So like, let's say, for example, you're, you're looking at a e-commerce based uh, app uh, where you're trying to sell a product, uh, this kind of information would be very valuable uh, for you to uh, gather at uh, at that stage. Um, Passing to the next slide. Um, so, so once you gather this information, it's it's important that you uh, look at it from a very analytical aspect. Uh, you look at, uh, for example which networks are giving you uh, your best downloads versus also your highest engaging uh, customers, because sometimes you'll find some networks will give you a large amount of downloads, but then uh, those customers are junk customers. You know, they're not really uh, using your service. They're not uh, customers that you can retain. They're not users that are really gonna generate revenue for you. So, so the insights that you gather through the data you collect it's it's very important that you regularly analyze it and uh, and look at it from a perspective in terms of how to improve uh, and and you know kind of get a better outcome. Look at things like um, how much time they spend in your app, what pages do they visit, uh, where do they drop off, um, you know what are there are there application uh, issues where the user falls out because it crashes, for example. Understand the trends uh, in terms of usage uh, and how you can leverage them. Like, uh, for example, um, you know, there might be certain times of the day where you might see increased usage in your app. So those kind of times would be ideal for you to kind of schedule an engagement message, a push message or something like that, because then you know that, um, I mean, you'll get better, uh, better engagement. This could be uh, for example, uh, the time that people are getting to office or going back home when they're on uh, commuting, basically. Um, so it, it all actually depends on on your app, on your product offering. So uh, you need to really look at uh, data and uh, and and figure out uh, how to uh, leverage that uh, insights that you can get through the data that uh, that you can gather and. And gather always as much information as you can because uh, data is something that will never go to waste. I mean, you will always have some use for it, even if you don't see the value of it immediately. Uh, even later on, uh, it it could uh, it could turn out to be some information that uh, that could be of value to you. Um, yeah. So so depending on the objectives that you have uh, set out, uh, you can you can then select. Uh, the most suited channels to market uh, your application, be it social media, uh, digital advertising networks, or, or mass uh, media. Again, um, for example, if you're in a brand building stage where you're creating awareness, uh, mass media and social uh, media would be good options. Uh, if you're in a stage where you would like to uh, go for like a performance driven model where you want to acquire users for subscription or so on. Um, digital advertising networks uh, would be uh, a better option so that you can uh, you can uh, pay for each acquired uh, subscriber. Um, again, social media also, like some networks offer this, uh, some don't. But uh, again, those are all options that you can look at, uh, depending on which stage of the life cycle you are in terms of your uh, funnel that you are going through. Uh, uh, sorry, next slide. Uh, yeah, so uh, it, uh, 
once you um, once you've launched your uh, campaign, as I was saying earlier, uh, you need to monitor your conversions, uh, the user engagements, and and the revenue that is coming uh, from your different uh, networks, uh, so that you can, as I was saying, you can monitor the channels that are giving you uh, better quality traffic. Uh, you can focus more on those, and then um, you can look at how you can scale. So, for example, let's just take Facebook versus Google. Uh, you might uh, you might be running a campaign for the same application on both Facebook and Google, uh, but you might find that one network is giving you better quality uh, subscribers uh, or users of your application. So you can you can dig into it to see uh, what kind of uh, profiles uh, you are targeting in each of those networks. If it's identical, where are these customers coming from? Um, and and maybe you can uh, you can increase budgets in areas where you're getting better quality customers. Um, and again, as as Shanak pointed out, this is not something that uh, that you will start off with and then end. This is a continuous cycle where you will need to uh, keep tweaking your approach, your campaign, your target audience. Uh, and and constantly keep improving and fine tuning your uh, approach uh, in in the marketing campaign so that um, you get the best out of the money that you're spending because end of the day uh, I think all of us want to maximize the benefit that we get out of the uh, money that we allocate to uh, market and promote our products so so the best way to do that is uh, you know constantly uh, analyzing your data and looking at what you can do to uh, improve uh, the outcome that you're getting. Shanak, I think, uh, yeah, you, you want to take over before we go to the next stage? Uh, okay. Yes, uh, so uh, before going to uh, uh, ad networks, so I think uh, uh, like we'll take a few minutes and talk about Pasindu. If you can talk about uh, the marketing opportunities that we have uh, uh, for these, uh, uh, like for the, the weavers uh, that can be participants uh, who are watching in Sri Lanka or anyone else who is watching outside the country. Uh, let's talk about the marketing methods, freely available and paid versions of marketing avail opportunities available. Uh, well, uh, yeah, uh, well, when you talk about uh, marketing of a mobile app, there are basically uh, two ways where you can get uh, organic downloads, organic marketing, or uh, yes. paid marketing. Yes. So in organ, uh, in right now, shall I, shall I go to a, a, a so? Yes, yes. So there are two okay. two methods, guys. So uh, one method is. Uh, where you can get free downloads that can be like uh, as Pasindu will explain. ASO, uh, if you are doing a website SEO methods where Google will uh, you know rank your website or mobile application in in higher higher levels, uh, where you will get free marketing. Uh, so if you follow these methods, you will get free marketing. Uh, the second option would be paid marketing, and we'll be talking about in the later sessions. Uh, so Pasindu, let's go to free marketing methods that is ASO. Yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, right now I'll be talking about uh, ASO or App Store optimization, which is an organic uh, marketing method. And I would like to say that uh, I'm not gonna go deeper into this topic. This topic itself can take around two hours. So I'm gonna session, yes. Yeah, yes, I'm gonna yes. crack the service and let you know about uh, ASO. All right, so. Why is this important? So the most important thing about ASO is ASO is based on either on Apple App Store or Google Play Store, right? So since we are on the topic of uh, mobile apps, whatever the marketing campaign you do, the cost, the consumer, the end users will land on your either Google uh, Play Store or your Apple App Store, right? That's definitely going to happen. There's no way of skipping that, right? So uh, uh, th that's the main important thing. Why main important thing? Why you should uh, 
optimize your app store uh, appearance and uh, mobile app, uh, app store view right uh, so uh, once you have a, a really uh, how to say a really optimized app right you will have more user retentions and uh, it will definitely uh, improve the chance of uh, your revenue going up right as per apple 65% of their downloads are from organic traffic which means only 35 downloads are coming through the paid advertisements the rest are coming through organic traffic which i think that now you by this you will understand that it's really important that you have really uh, well optimized app so that you will get uh, more organic downloads okay so why you should have your app on uh, google play store and uh, sorry why it should be optimized and i think you know that uh, well optimized app means it appears at, as a top search result right? when you talk about web, uh, 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 well uh, optimization channel what's the word i'm not in my sorry uh, website but it's the website uh, what we say for a good optimized website what's it uh, google rankings no yes google that sorry say, say, yes. yeah yes so when a website is very well optimized it will it will rank as a top search result same thing yes. happens uh same thing happens in uh app store, app store optimization as well right so i'm gonna ask you guys a small question so you i think you know uh so uh this question is who finished uh first in uh 2016 uh, Rio Olympic men's 100 meter finals. I think you all know that's Usain Bolt, oh. right? In, he was the first in 2008 and 12 and 16, right? But if I ask who came third, no one knows, right? No one knows who came third. Same thing happens with the app store optimization. No one's going to care about your app if it's not a top search result. If it's the hundred result, no one's gonna care about your app. No one's gonna download it, right? So that's the main reason why you should have your app as a top search result uh, in the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. So that's the reason why you should have your app optimized. So now, uh, just I'm gonna talk about a few facts. How can you get your app uh, as a top search result? Uh, how can you get your app optimized well? The first thing, uh, your app name. It's really important because that's that's one of the key search terms, right? You should have a unique name. You should. Pasu, name Pasu, name. we'll 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 get some examples as well. So I think yeah. that that will be easier for uh, uh, viewers. Let's say uh, let's take an application. Let's say a fitness application. Let's say. Um, Sorry. Okay. So let's say Pasindu is creating an application, a fitness application. What should be the name Pasindu? What, what should we uh, name it as? Say, say fitness. Okay, tough job. Daily tough, fitness. Tough. Daily fitness. Huh? That's a good name. Yeah. Daily fitness. So uh, before going that, uh, uh, we have to see the fitness term is uh, highly highly searched in Google Play in Google. Uh, within the region that you are targeting that we spoke about those things earlier uh, using analytics. Uh, so daily fitness, you have the fitness name with your name. So that's a plus point. You have app name as daily fitness. Yes, two words, you have your keyword in your app name. Right. Second one. Yeah, so the second name is, uh, second thing is a uh, uh, proper use of keywords in the short description as well as in the long description. If you have uploaded a app to the Google Play Store, you should know that there are two descriptions that you should fill. One is short description. Uh, it's around 80 characters, I guess. And there's a long, long description. So when you're filling that description, when you're when you're typing the description, make sure to use proper keywords. Keywords are keywords should those keywords should relate to your app and the content inside your app, right? So like this, uh, when we talk about the example Shanaka took the fitness app, right? Uh, there are so many, I'll, I'll say around 100,000 fitness apps on Google Play Store, right? So just using the 
keyword fitness won't uh, help you in optimizing your app. You should uh, you should you should do a proper keyword search using either Google Keyword Planner or something like that. You should do something uh, a research like that, and you should come up with unique terms uh, which which can describe your app. Let's say if if, a fit, if I'm talking about the fitness app, I would say healthy eating, fat burning, things like that. I'm just using the, the max an example, right? Things uh, keywords like that can improve uh, optimization of your app, right? Uh, Shana, anything to add? I was just checking uh, the analytics uh, of uh, right. you know fitness fitness term. So uh, as Pasun mentioned, guys, you have to have like terms related with fitness, but already but also that that is being connected to fitness and uh, well searched. On internet, uh, you have to connect uh, it to the descriptions. Not too much. You can't have a fitness, fitness, fitness uh, description like that. You have to connect to get a meaningful description. Uh, to uh, to 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 see, you users will also read this and download that. Also, the bots that Google runs, uh, you know, in 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 uh, on the on these uh, uh, listings, that they will understand this application has rich keywords and they will rank this application higher that's another important thing third one person yeah so the next thing is uh app reviews and ratings i think you have seen that all the apps all the apps on play store apps, apple app store has app reviews and ratings for your app to be ranked up top you should have good ratings and good reviews that's obvious because more if you have uh, if you have lower ratings and uh, uh, and bad reviews. Obviously, none of those play, uh, stores gonna list you uh, list your app on top, right? They to put it to down. start off, is person I would say uh, uh, for anyone, uh, ask yeah, your sure, friends, right. ask your ask, yeah, ask your I'm family. Yeah, I'm coming to that point. I'm yes, coming yes, to that yes. point. Okay, right. So that's the thing. And the next thing is downloads, right? More the more downloads you have, more your app will uh, more the more app will appear on the top of the uh, search results. Right, so how you can do is now we know now we know that you all are beginners, right? You are. I'm, I'm assuming that the competitors are in this event. You are. I guess that you are making your first or second app, right? What you can do is ask your friends. I th I know that you will have this big huge WhatsApp groups, Facebook groups, and whatnot, right? Ask your friends to download your app and put a good review, right? It's free. They won't. Uh, they won't be charged to do do that, and it's it, it will only take around five five star review. review. Five star <laughs> review. Yeah, ask them to put a five star review, and ask them to download your app, and you'll be done, right? Then uh, actually, that that's the easiest thing you can do. Yes. Yes. Out yes. of the points that I mentioned here, that's the easiest thing you can do. Ask your friends to download it and put your good review. Uh, so that uh, one one step covered in uh, optimizing your app. And the next thing is updating your app regularly. Let's assume that you have uploaded your app in 2019 and you have not pushed, put an update af uh, after 2019, right? So the Google or uh, Apple will not list your app on top because the last update is way back, right? So then, uh, it's really important that you should that you need to update your app regularly. Um, I mean, not like daily, but not daily or monthly. But in regular, you should be updating your app re at regular intervals, right? So then it will help in app top app store message as well. And the last thing, uh, if this this actually does not uh, improve optimization, but uh, this is kind of the important thing because. When users land in land into your Google Play Store app, uh, app download uh, menu, but the appearance, the, what they see does matter, right? If they see a app with a uh, ugly logo, right, or uh, bad screenshots, right, uh, they are not gonna download your. App. They they have to be perfect, right? Uh, just give me a second. I'm I'm gonna share my screen with. Uh, an example.
I hope everyone can see the screen. Okay, uh, so the example I'm going to use is WhatsApp, you can, as you can see here. Uh, you can see their topic. The name is simple. It says about the product they are doing. And what I wanted to show you was the screenshots. If you go, if you see, if you can see the screenshots, they actually they are the appearance is good, and they explain about the product, right? This is how the chat will look, and this is how the personal chat will look, and this is how a video call will look. They have covered everything throughout the screenshots, right? And uh, if I go to reviews, they have uh, that itself has I think uh, this, this might be very 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 high downloads and uh, if you see the reviews they have uh, post uh, 4.0 review. Uh, that's a, that's review a really marks. good number no? compared to really the good. issues that they got. Uh, yeah, yes. privacy concerns, but still good making a good number. Uh, don't expect uh, the apps that you create will get the same. Uh, so even if you have thousand downloads, people will you know rate it as low. But it happens. But what you have to do is you can always uh, uh, ask your friends, family, or uh, loyal consumers of your product to rate. Uh, I, I'm sure that you have seen uh, when you play certain applications or games, it comes for okay, rate us, rate us, if you are good, rate us as five. So that's the main reason that they do. Uh, they put effort to get the Play Store ratings uh, since it's very important. Pasu, if, if, if you are done with this, yeah. if you can, like, uh, yes. let's say uh, 10 minutes. Uh, uh, of time and let's do a quick session of uh, uh, Facebook ad demonstration and Steve to do uh, a quick uh, explanation about that networks. So while Pasindu, uh, you know, uh, uh, gets his demo uh, ready, uh, I'll talk about uh, this difference between marketing uh, strategies that we have. So uh, Pasindu explained about ASO methods. Uh, so basically ASO is app, app store optimizations or SEO or any other method that is totally free for you. Uh, so right now we'll be talking about paid promotions. Like let's say for this competition, the best method would be the paid promotions because we have one month of time. We have to complete everything within one month. So uh, it's easier for you to uh, invest on this product and gain a good traction. Pasindu, if you are ready, we can go for the Facebook uh, yeah, ad, uh, demonstration. Yeah. Yes. Right. Right. Yes. So, so we'll take 10, 10 minutes. Uh, yeah, so we'll okay. find this up. Yes. Yes. Right. So uh, here you can see uh, how uh, Facebook, Facebook ad manager will look, right? Um, to create an app, uh, you should you should click on go to ads manager and click on your name. Since I have already uh, connected my card details to this, uh, directly direct directly goes to this page and. If you have not connected the card, you will have to connect a card to this and you will to create a new campaign, you will have to click on app installs. So uh, Pasindu, as Pasindu uh, yeah. completes uh, the, the steps, I'll, I'll help uh, I'll guide you on that. Uh, if you are using a mobile application, it's app installs. If you are using a, a website or PWA or any other method that can be traffic and ads. Or oh, if you are trying to uh, sell a good that can be uh, conversion or product like any other any other methods or traffic or something like that. Uh, so right now we are using uh, uh, app install uh, method campaign category. Possible? Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, when you are creating a new campaign, you should uh, first name your campaign. So I'm gonna name it Evo. Uh, and uh, if you are this this category is needed if you're only marketing on a special uh, special ad category it's political or stuff like that political or social issues if not you need there's no need of feeling this and uh, in here there's nothing much you need to change facebook will automatically set up the things correctly uh, there's nothing here that you need to change and you need to click on next and here uh, again, you can change that name. That's actually not much needed. This is the where this is the place that you should uh, put your app URL, the Play Store uh, link, right? And in here you can manage 
how much you are spending for a day or a month or a week how your spending uh, can be uh, decided here currently it says 20 dollars but what we recommend usually is spending uh, 10 to 20 dollars in a day uh, which can good we can uh, get a good traction and good traffic to your uh, website sorry to uh, to your app, to your play store account and uh, if again here you can schedule uh, the day and time uh, starting day of your at, uh, sorry at, at campaign and now uh, okay and so you Pasu, can set up can day you Pasu, can you zoom in a little bit uh, uh, sorry. i'm not sure if, uh, you just can't see the entire screen. Ah, oh, yeah, that, that's very clear. Yes, thank you. Right, sorry. Yes. So here, again, I'm going to say this is where you can set up your budget and campaign start date and time and end date and, end date and time as well. Uh, like Shannon mentioned in the first part of the session, uh, this is the place that you, you can and you will have to select the person of your users, right? You can select the location that you're targeting your app, so I targeting your ad, Currently, Sri Lanka. I'm not gonna change anything. If you vote, these are, you can... these are, uh, if, if you remember the STP method that I explained, uh, this is actually the target groups uh, the, after you select from the segmentation. The target uh, basis that we selected uh, that can be Colombo people, people Colombo uh, male uh, uh, working crowd or something like that. The buckets that I explained, Pasimu, I think that is yep. this. So yes. that is. Yes. Let's explain this part. Actually, you can change the age, right? And uh, you can select a language as well. If you are targeting a targeting a specific uh, like a specific uh, language, you can set it up here. And uh, when you go down a bit, here you can select the placement as manual automatically. I'm going to just click on manual and show you how it's done. So basically, this is where uh, we are the places that your ad will be displayed, right? It either will be displayed on Facebook, Instagram, Messenger, and Audio Center. So here you can select what you want to, uh, what, what you what you can what you want your ad to be appeared on, and you can select and deselect and continue, right? Uh, and of course, uh, you can set up. Uh, in here, you can set up minimum, uh, sorry, budget cap for your advertisement. So that uh, if you need something like that, you can set it up. Uh, type an amount and uh, click on next. So in here, you have to select a page name and then uh, you will have to uh, insert an image here, the flyer or a video. Once that's done, uh, you will have to click on publish and Facebook will review your ad and they'll, then they will publish it. So that's how it's, how the process is it's done. Very, it's, very, it's very easy. So what you have to do is, uh, uh, only issue here is we have to identify uh, like the proper proper market segmentation and uh, you know get it uh, on on social media uh, if you go to google uh, sorry if you go to facebook audience insights if you go to ads manager and search for audience insights you can you can have a look at the audiences that that you, you are you should market for for certain industries so let's say so I, like you are, you want to sell alto vehicles you can see the interest of uh, alto uh, the demographics and the interest of 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 this country at the same time, uh, the second one is we have to get a proper ma marketing, uh, the creative uh, creative uh, banner or, or a, that can be a video, that can be a post, that is really important. And the ad copy, the ad headings and the primary text, something like that, it's very important. You have to attract the users. So those are the key steps. So I think uh, you are very clear about uh, uh, how to place ad ad Facebook advertisement. So the next step is uh, getting uh, uh, working with uh, ad networks. So we are, Steve will explain a bit about uh, uh, working with ad networks and getting a uh, huge traction uh, to your website or mobile application through networks. Yes, Steve. Right. Um, so guys, I think um, we are mostly familiar with Facebook, uh, Google uh, for running campaigns. Um, and, and I think to be fair, 
those two are very large uh, uh, networks that you can uh, capitalize on because they've got a massive uh, user base and uh, they've got a, a lot of user information that they can play around with to um, kind of target and get you the right kind of audience that you are looking for specifically uh, for, for your app out there. Um, but if you actually venture out uh, from these networks, there are also uh, other media buying uh, companies that, uh, that have large uh, traffic um, and uh, they, they are able to place your ads on other websites, um, third party websites, third party apps like, for example, um, it could be it could be a free game that you're playing, like Candy Crush, for example. Uh, they have the capability to place ads uh, within such applications uh, and 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 generate traffic for you. So I'm I'm just going to touch base on um, those kind of ad networks and how uh, and what kind of uh, ad formats and so on you have uh, at your disposal. Um, Pasan, if you can go to the next screen, yeah. Uh, so these uh, alternate networks uh, mainly have a, a couple of uh, formats that you can work with uh, to deliver your advertisements. Uh, Ban ads, I think uh, most of us are familiar with. It's mainly a image format, and um, it'll it'll pop up, uh, you know, maybe at the bottom of your app or as you're scrolling through an article that you're reading on a website or an app, you'll see uh, a banner placed somewhere there. And uh, if it actually gets the attention of uh, the user at the time, they could click and then get uh, directed to your application so that uh, they can uh, have a look at your application. And if it's of interest to them, then they will proceed to the next step of downloading it. Uh, interstitial ads uh, can be of two formats. It could be either an image or uh, a video format. And uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the term inst interstitial ads, basically it's a it's a full screen ad that pops up. Um, you might have seen it. Uh, so this can be again. Um, I think uh, what we have found is that the video uh, based ads generally have better user engagement. Uh, of it because of its visual nature, uh, people uh, are more drawn to it and would tend to interact with it and then uh, come to your product and uh, try it out. Uh, another option that is available is uh, push notifications. Um, this is primarily a text-based format, uh, but uh, moving on with newer updates that have happened now, you can have the option to include maybe a small image uh, along with it and uh, kind of use that to redirect traffic to uh, your app again. Um, so uh, if you look at, um, you know, these kind of ad networks, so if you just Google it, you'll find plenty like, for example, Propeller and so on. Um, you'll, you'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to get traffic. It's a similar model to like what Pasind was explaining on Facebook in terms of you select your demographic, you would select uh, your budget. It could be a daily budget, a total cap uh, for your entire budget uh, for your app. Let's say you have uh, $100 to spend, you want to spend a maximum $10 a day. You can set those kind of uh, budgets. You can select uh, again, which time of the day you would like to run your ads. Um, again, this goes back to the, the data that you gather in terms of usage information and uh download trends and you know if you're, if this is information that you have been gathering along the way and you find that let's say for example you get the most amount of downloads uh between 9 p.m and 10 p.m or 9 p.m and 12 p.m you can schedule your ads to run uh within that time slot for example um and uh, if you go to the uh the, the, the bidding models that are available. Um, again, I, I'm not sure as to what level of understanding you guys have, so I'll just be a so little I bit think, I think the, this, this will be very important, Steve, for like any extent. I think these yeah. terms will be any very important for these uh, 
uh, like anyone who is watching. So yes, we right. can continue. Okay, yeah, sure. So so the first one is a, a cost per click, which is known as a CPC model. Uh, basically, how this works is uh, you would be paying for every user who clicks on, uh, let's say, a banner, for example. Uh, there would be a price for every click. Generally, this price is a very, very low number, um, like, you know, 0 0.001 uh, US cents or something along those lines where uh, they would click and then be sent to your uh, page regarding uh, your application so that they can download it. Now, again, um, I'm just going to go through these and then I'll come back to uh, how and where to use them. Um, so for example, your CPC, uh, CPC is generally uh, good for creating brand awareness, generating installs, and, and driving user engagement. Um, then we have your CPI model, which is basically a cost per installation. Um, again, for an app, this is the best uh, approach where you would only pay for a specific, uh, I'm sorry, you would only pay when an app is successfully installed. And uh, irrespective of how many impressions, how many clicks uh, that the, the user goes through or how many users have been sent, you only pay if there is a successful installation. CPA uh, is cost per acquisition. Uh, this again is better suited for uh, driving subscriptions or, or sales um, in an app. So say for example, some you someone downloads your app, but they don't subscribe to it, then uh, you don't pay. You only pay if they actually go through the process and complete it and subscribe. Uh, only then would you pay for that uh, subscriber. Uh, CPM is basically cost per thousand impressions, uh, which, uh, which is good for brand awareness. And again, the difference between uh, CPC and CPM is uh, in terms of CPM, you're paying for the impression. Uh, you're paying for basically a thousand impressions. That's why it's called CPM. Um, but when it comes to CPC, you're actually paying only when they click on the banner advertisement, irrespective of uh, how many views or how many people have actually uh, seen that advertisement. Um, so again, CPM is a good option uh, to create brand awareness. Uh, when you're creating awareness, it can obviously drive installations. And, and it can also be used for uh, driving engagement. Now, there are pros and cons that I think are quite important when you're looking at uh, these kind of ad networks. Um, firstly, uh, there's, there's integration effort. You need to integrate uh, backend API calls uh, to be able to track conversions, for example, uh, or installations. Uh, again, there are platforms, tools out there that uh, you can uh, sort of uh, embed into your app. For example, I mentioned uh, a platform called Kochava earlier. And if you use the Kochava uh, APK in your app, your uh, CPI, CPA conversions are to a certain extent uh, taken care of with uh, some net ad networks. But uh, with ones that are not, you have to actually manually um, do the integration in order to track it. Um, you also have to be a little cautious about uh, fraud with uh, some networks because um, you know sometimes there are bot clicks and so on. So uh, you, need to, you need to be aware of uh, those kind of uh, elements as well when you're running your campaigns because uh, if not, what will happen is you'll be just burning your cash and then you're not really going to be getting the results that you're expecting. Uh, from the money that you've spent and then you think you know there's something wrong with your app but it may not necessarily be the case it could just be that uh, there could be fraudulent clicks and bots basically uh, burning your cash for you um, so uh, from from a uh, from a campaign perspective I think uh, you need to 
experiment with multiple approaches uh, always use all the available options out there and uh, see what works for you uh, because different uh, sources have different traffic uh, and different customers uh, so the, the 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 quality of the traffic the type of people that will see your ads uh, will greatly differ even from ad network to ad network um and so it's a it's always a learning curve it's something that you have to constantly keep uh, keep at uh in order to um you know um benefit from it but also you have to keep in mind one one more thing is that um these things switch around as well so say for example today you might find uh, ad network a giving you really good traffic really good conversions and the best value for your money but you know two weeks down the line you might find that uh, ad network b is suddenly giving you better traffic and better conversions whereas ad network a is no longer working for you so again i think it all comes down to the point that uh, shanak earlier said as well this is a continuous process this is something that you have to be on every day you have to look at it every day continuously uh, analyze improve tweak and uh, keep keep modifying it so that uh, you you are always on top of your game basically right 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 thank you steve uh, like uh, to uh, before winding up i uh, we have two questions from mafas is it possible to show my ad to who i like from some other fb page no you can't uh, basically you can show uh, if i if i own uh, two pages let's say i own page a and page b i can show my ad to page a or page b but i can't like let's say we have uh, let's say we have po- some politicians page we can't show our ads to that person that person's audience but if we know his audience insights if you can use facebook audience insight tool we can see uh, let's say this page uh visitors facebook page visitors has these interest and like these demographics we can use that and retarget but we can't directly target these users in 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 page uh dinidu is asking uh how do we do a youtube ad campaign you can use google ads and um, you can do a video advertisement but make sure you can't um, have singular based videos but you can only have english based videos on youtube you can do it using google ads Uh, but we will not be covering it today just go to uh, our channel uh, idea mart channel we have a, a separate session done on digital uh, content digital ad, uh, digital marketing a full session on facebook ads aso and google ads separately just watch it so you have the content covered uh, before winding up as you mentioned uh, so basically uh, try different different channels right so uh, and like iterate every day like uh, try it out try different different approaches like uh, try all these approaches like no do don't like you know ca- like capture it into one approach okay this is good but after 6 month you realize that okay this is not performing well i had to uh, see a different approach but uh, uh, time is money right time cost you money so uh, don't make a gap between those two actions just try everything parallelly get help from your friend get help from your teammates uh, try different different approaches uh, if you face any issues just contact us our whatsapp number is 0767412345 just message us or email us to info@ideamart.lk so we'll we'll we there for help or just use uh, uh, app makers dashboard and there's this uh, you know help option and just use that just talk to steve and his team they they are really to help so uh, that's another key point so uh, uh like uh, i think we can wind up soon anything if you guys want to add uh, pasindu and steve uh, uh you can uh, just quickly mention it here yes anything you want to add um, no i think we covered covered everything uh, right right yeah yes pasindu one more thing uh, yes. mafaz is asking i uh, uh Uh, he has questions. Change the screenshot without updating them. Uh, yes, Mavad, you can change the screenshots, but uh, Google will review it. Right? Google will review that uh, newly added screenshots, and then they will publish the app again. There's a there's a review process. There's a review there's process. A review Even process. if you change the description, a single word in the description, so make sure that you like that your compliance is their policies. uh first like best option would be like to complete everything in the first step and uh, you know you are done 
so uh, yes mention your idea about phone number uh, our whatsapp number is 0767412345 that's our whatsapp number just whatsapp us to that or just go to the idea mart app make a dashboard and chat with steve so <laughs> see you next steve is not okay <laughs> just kidding <laughs> all right uh, yes uh, i think we can wrap up uh, anyone from isaac uh, joining pasindu yeah uh, uh, shahan is uh, real we can like quickly right. wind up uh, then uh, yes. yeah yes, okay sure. thank you very much uh, uh, it was quite an insightful session and uh, as you can see even if you are having a worthy idea of the today's concept content even if you can't market it in the proper place in the market it would be a problem so today during the session today in this discussion in the online discussion uh, with idea but we gain a uh, new perspectives on the subject and of course uh, right now the sri lanka is to uh, heading towards a positive direction when it comes to uh, digital marketing and techn technological based um, revolution so uh, i would like to send my gratitude on behalf of the isaac university of morocco mr for mr steve aframs uh, managing director of simato was solution private limited thank you so very much sir for your time and for your contribution in the session and also mr shanaka vikramarachi tech evangelist dialogue asiata idea mart and also mr pasindu bandaranaika tech evangelist dialogue asiata idea mart for uh, being with us here today and empowering the, the future generation of sri lankan technological uh, wonder and of course uh, we'd like to send a big uh, gratitude and a big shout out to all the foreign participants who are here today with the session thank you very much for taking your time and spending us with nearly 2 hours uh, in this session and also uh, for the the participants who are being who are expecting to anticipate to be a part of idealize 2021 uh, please do take these advices to uh, have these invites apply them in the uh, in the, your competition journey and uh, make make wonders and that's what we read right now as a country and as a community so having said that uh, with best of luck with your competition in idealize 2021 powered by idea mart and uh, Uh, we'll be with we'll be there tomorrow with the fourth session of the mentoring session and uh, thank you very much for being with us today have a nice day thank you thank, thank you. you guys thank you shan